Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Uh, my name's Josh and I do all sorts of fishing. So today's video is gonna be about what's in my fly bag. It's taken me a couple years to get to this point. Um, I use an Orvis sling bag, uh, works great, it's light. I can push back through the woods on it and I can switch it over to salt water real quick, throw some other flies in there and keep going. So let's go over that real quick. It's a sling, I wear it on my right shoulder. Um, I have my clippers clippers and a nail knot tool and a little retractable. I got the normal forceps, which everybody should have. Then I have a Rio um, slash fish pond tippet spool holder. Just got this. Uh, it makes a lot more sense than the homemade one that I have and it's gonna last forever. So I'll leave the links for anything I have in the descriptions below. Um, usually Amazon affiliate links and it's got a little cutter there which I haven't used yet and then let's go inside the bag and I also normally have a net hanging off the side of this so later on in the video we're going to catch some some rainbow trout um, so let me take kind of everything out um, I was just saltwater fishing so I have my saltwater flies in there and I'll go over a couple of my flies toilet paper which is like a hot commodity right now of course um, I have a little bit of tape measure. I have a couple of uh, poly leaders. So this is a, a weighted leader that I just basically tie my own nail knots on and uh, perfection loops on. And that just helps me uh, dredge and get down there if I need to actually get down in some, some deeper, faster water. Um, I normally have that wound up and I have another one. So that's three foot, that's two foot. So inside the bag, I have a Tenkara leader and some other real leaders. I normally tie my own or I just started tying my own so I don't have really good examples for that. Um, there's another front pocket here that I'll show you guys. Take out, all the, take out all this stuff first. So a couple of the cool things that I'll take out. Things that you have to have in your fly bag which is um, graphitoline ferrule wax. So this keeps your rod together. I always had issues with my rod coming apart because uh, I throw heavy flies and the rod's a little bit older so the tip of the rod would come off and the midsection would start to loosen up and you would feel it uh, by that and it's kind of like too late. And if you ever get a big fish, you'd actually break your rod really easy. So this is just a little bit of paste. Um, I did another video on how to prep your fly rod. So just a fingertip of that, rub it on the male part of the rod and uh, that keeps it stuck together. Like I said, link below. Uh, Loon Outdoors. Uh, Loxa, which is basically keeps your dry flies floating, which is really sweet. So you put a little bit of stuff on your dry flies. It's another little gadget. Uh, football lead, lead free shot. So New Hampshire is lead free. So we have to use lead free stuff here. Not completely lead free. You can use over an ounce. And then I have this um, Shimasaki dry shake. So this is silica powder. I'm trying not to open it without exploding everywhere, but hopefully you guys can see the consistency of that. So it's basically the thing you see in beef jerky packets, those little silica packets that keep everything dry. This is just a ground version of that with some other chemicals. You put a dry fly in there, shake it all about, and that thing is perfectly dry when it comes out. So that's kind of key. Level line for Tenkara. Uh, some other flies. Uh, and I just switched over to a new method of keeping my flies organized. So I have my dry box dry fly box, show it to there to the nice camera, nice still. And so I have some parachute atoms, um, some clink cameras, some mosquitoes, caddis flies, um, some Griffiths gnats, some other stuff I don't even know the names of because I just get, I get given flies and stuff all the time because uh, everybody knows I love to fish. And then I have my, my money box or streamer box. So I have, I just did this to my fly box. I need one more fly box, which you always need more anyways. Have all my streamers on this side. Uh, most of those are hand tied and some smelt patterns. And then um, I just started keeping some of my nymphs. So I have some stonefly nymphs, um, some copper john, some egg patterns, some of the stuff I tied myself, some, some worms, stuff that I use on the bottom. So I get to keep everything that sinks together. I'm gonna create another box for those eventually. And then I have some oddball like really big flies, like tandem flies and tandem sculpins on this side that I like to keep. 
and then I have the money box. So this is what I carry. So what I ended up finding is I'm searching through boxes or I see fish going from dries to, they stop eating on dry, so I want to switch over to underwater real quick or, or below the surface. So I want to switch flies quick. I want one box that has everything in it. So this is what I call my money box. So I got uh, my midges, my parachute atoms, my elk hair caddis, some other nymphs in there that I tied myself, mosquitoes, squirmy worms, and some homemade mop flies, woolly buggers, and these are my go-to woolly buggers right here. So the olive woolly buggers, black. Um, I do tie some slump busters too, but I don't have any in there right now. I just haven't got a chance to tie any. So that's what's in my fly box. So that's what's in the bag. Hope you guys uh, like how I organize my stuff. This is taking me a couple years to get it all organized properly. And like I said, I just changed over to this new method of, of keeping one of these um, go-to boxes um, right out in front here so I can just quickly switch flies. Then I usually dry my stuff on top here or I dry my stuff here after I'm done using a fly. Um, so that's it. And uh, make sure you watch the rest of this video. There's a couple rainbow trout that I caught early this spring and um, we were fishing right in the dark, right as it's legal. And uh, watch this first cast here. It's pretty interesting. Caught this rainbow in probably about four inches of water. So make sure you watch, like subscribe and hit that thumbs up button and enjoy. I got a white bully bugger on man. If anything's possible with one of these things. <laughs> a, a woolly bugger is way more fly fishing than a squirmy worm. Oh no, I do, I do too. I got a fish. Get the out of here, no way. Yep. You really do? Yeah. I just plopped it in there. I tried to, I tried to do a backswing in the. Feisty! There we go, nice rainbow this morning. That took about a uh, half of 30 seconds. Dude, nice! Uh, yeah, don't go splashing in there like I just did. <laughs> no, no, I'm staying way down That's too funny, guys. That, is too uh, that took literally half a second to go in there. Uh, I didn't even get a chance to set the hook. Actually, I set the hook by accident. Ow. Ow. No, and they got barbless hooks here, which is kind of sweet. Yeah. And then, uh... This thing, your woolly bugger. <laughs> 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 Took me two seconds. Nice, nice, ra ra nice rainbow. There he goes. Well, My new gloves work, that's sweet. There we go. 30 feet downstream, you hooked him. <laughs> oh, really? We, have, we haven't caught a brown trout yet here, have you? Neither have I. Huh? It's white white, white woolly bugger. White woolly bugger. <laughs> Here we go. Cute little guy. And then white woolly bugger. Get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta pry it apart, right? You gotta like pry it apart and then by that time it's pretty much ruined. Yeah, that's a minor right now. Like, might as well drop it in the river at that point. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I'm like, where's my, where's my indicator? That's a bigger fish. I was, I look, they looked back. I was, I was about to look at you, and then. Uh, I watched your indicator go down. Did you? I didn't it see slow. it at all. Nice boat. Yep, yeah, there we go. Oh, that's a nice ball. I felt like oh, a bigger looks fish. Like you took the playbook out of my book. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll show you how I, how I tie. Uh, here, put them in the water a little bit more. I'll get a couple pictures of them. I didn't get pictures of the first one. That's a pretty one. Oh, that's 
Nice. All right, nice pretty fish, guys. That is. That's nice fish. Nice rosy cheeks. And back you go. See, even though they're stackies, I love the colors on these fish. Yeah, they're pretty good. They take their, the, uh, whatever you want to call it, the hatchery. Must be a good hatchery. 